here is the fridge we're working on. It's a GE side by side. This is the offending unit. And here's where you find the model number. You open the door. Okay, this is the GE fridge we're working on. We're going to show you quickly how to take off the outside fascia in this panel. So to take this off, you can just grab it with your fingernails. Or another handy tool is a guitar pick or a plastic spatula or they make plastic tools for taping, taking car trim apart. So you pop that off. Now this piece just pops off as well. You grab the bottom, tip the bottom out, lift up and out with the bottom, and then that just lifts out. Now once you have that out, you have three connectors here. You just pull these three connectors and this whole piece comes off. Once this piece is off, we then have four screws here. One, two, three, four. And this whole assembly comes out which gives you access to everything else we see in the rest of the following videos. Now another thing you see in the instructions is the fact that you're supposed to seal the water tube with silicone. So this is the water tube coming out and you can see there's condensation right here in this groove. The heater element sticks in this entire groove here. So this has to be cleaned and dried with alcohol and then they want this sealed around the water tube so that cold air doesn't come out there and cause condensation. Now the foil part of the heater that sticks in this indentation it does not actually get hot just the actual wire does. Now we have put the silicone around the water tube so it's basically around from 12 o'clock all the way around this on the other side as well just to seal this tube from letting air back out. Now we're going to mount the actual heater in this recess area. Now we have the heater mounted in the recess you can see here. The silver tinfoil like stuff is just the adhesive to locate it in the right place and I suppose it's kind of conductive so it helps spread the heat. But the actual heating element is only in this wire right down in this section. So we push that in and push it all down with a pencil eraser. And I'm actually going to take a little more of that silicone and seal the edges so it sure doesn't pop out of there. So this is the heating end of the actual heater. And this foil part just sticks in that indentation oriented like this actually and the foil part is just uh, an adhesive that holds the wire lead in place and the only part of the wire lead that actually gets hot it actually gets the hottest right in through here but then this whole wire loop here gets warm so my suspicion is that behind the door the water hose goes up and then over this way so this part here will get warm and then as we mentioned earlier, we're going to seal the water hose in the door that will be sitting right about there. We're putting the heater kit on a GE ice dispenser. This is the part number of the heater kit and it goes on a GE side-by-side -side fridge. In the instructions it says to use pin 2 and pin 6. I've seen some confusion about what wires you're supposed to clip into. One thing to keep in mind on the fridge you'll have three wiring harnesses coming into it. This one, this one, and this one. But the instructions is only talking about this six pin wiring harness. So for the sake of the instructions they're only talking about pin 2 which is power and pin 6 that says heater. 
And I know there's been some discussions about people having to experiment to get the right pins. Now on my fridge, pin two is red like the instructions say. The instructions say pin six should be white. On mine, it's black with a white strip. So I tried pin two and six and the heater does indeed work. So I believe the instructions are correct there except that they have their wrong color wire. So we'll take a quick look at the wire now. So here's how it looks on the refrigerator. You see the six pins. This is a mock-up board. And you see the second pin is a red wire and the bottom one on mine is white and black. So what we're gonna tap into is the second one and the sixth one, just like the instructions say. And I've already tested this by clamping leads on the pin outs here and I've tested it and that does indeed work. So here, here's another look at that. The wire didn't slide in because the metal piece was pushed in a bit. So I just grabbed it with a plier, pulled it back out. So the existing wire is a through wire like this. Then we're trying to tap a end of a wire like this onto it. So the through wire would go right in there. That's the one that's on the refrigerator. That would go right in there like that. The end of our heater wire would go right in here and it should push all the way in so you can see it in that little window. And if it won't, it means this little thing will slip down a little bit. So you just grab it and pull it up a little bit and this should slip all the way in. Now, now it's ready to crimp. So we have our through wire, that would be the fridge. This would be the one from the heater element because it ends in there. Now we grab our plier and we squish this down, basically flush, like it says in instructions, and then we snap the cap over just to protect it. But I'm not gonna do it because this is just a mock-up to show you how these connectors work. There's the way they should look when they're clamped in. The little metal thing is absolutely flush. Then you just flip this cap over and it's just to protect it. So now you can see we have the heater clamped onto our number two wire, which is red, and our number six wire, which is black and white. And it's not warm yet because you have to have the rest of the control board hooked up in order for it to kick on. While we're adding the heating element, we're also replacing the flapper here, which can get uh, weak. And if that hangs open, then it lets cold air right down on the dispenser. So we're gonna replace the flapper and actually the flapper spring. Another key here, when you're taking the flapper door off, there's a captured spring there that will fly out and get lost so there's two screws one here on the left and a similar one that needs to go right there you can just loosen this one and remove this one and then you can pull the door off to the up and right but this little spring here will fly off and get lost it was actually broken on this fridge so that's a new spring Now on the flapper door, we're going to replace this flapper, but the uh, the arm piece uh, gets reused. So on these, we pry these little pins apart until you can pull the top out, and then the bottom just pops out from under there, like so. Then we get the new one and put it in the same way. There's the new one. There's the part number. like this the old one if you look at the back it was not quite flat anymore so cold air could leak out the bottom of it which would help it freeze up the water dispensing hose so the bottom we just pop under there snap the bottom down and this is ready to go back in 